What is going on? We have got really a special knife to talk about today. And as you can see, it's got some amazing, amazing glow to it. It like glow. Yeah. Loom for days, if you will. What we are talking about here, as you probably saw from the title and thumbnail, is the Skelton Blade Works Mini Hellraiser. Um, this is not the first knife that I've gotten that Jim Skelton used to own. I guess he used to own this because, well, he made it. So he owned it before he sold it to me. And we'll talk about how that happened as we go through this video. And I'm going to try to do Jim some justice here, okay? If you don't know who Jim Skelton is, then where have you been the last 10 years of the internet? Uh, Jim has been on YouTube since about 2013, so about nine years or so in his current channel. I may have had one before that. Eh. We're talking about his knife career here. He was really into watches before also. So I'm going to try to do him justice, but because he is a legend in the YouTube world, I, I'm not going to be... You're not going to get quite as much of a mm, impactful video as he does. But I am going to try to give you a little bit of insight and maybe a little bit of background on Jim as well as this particular knife that he built. Now, some other knives that I've owned that he or that I do own that he previously owned was Big Red. When it was time for him to sell it, I had to have it, so I got it. I had a huge big collection at that time. It's now pared down some, but that's one I still keep. He had already sold the very first custom Hellraiser to somebody else. And when I had an opportunity to buy it, my uh, good friend Eric sent me a uh, text with a picture of this and three other customs. I said, dude, don't, don't do anything until... We talk, and I had to buy that. So this one kind of finishes out my uh, Skelton trifecta. And you can see here there's some stuff on the blade because it's in a leather sheath. So oftentimes you'll get some leather remnants as you withdraw it from the sheath. The enjoyment of the deployment, so to speak. I know Jim trademarked that, but... It's his knife that he made so I can use it, I, I think. And I told him I was going to, and he laughed. So I, I he didn't say no. Ah, so this one, it came with a patch, which is actually kind of a cool patch, um, if you're into patches. And his certificate of authenticity. I do love his logo. It's very cool. And there's stuff on the table that's white. I don't understand. But here you go. And in the instructions here, don't put it in the dishwasher and don't insert into your rectum. Good advice. Thank you, Jim, uh, for putting that in print. Or, you know, you never know. Okay? So Jim started making knives back in 2016. He was taught the basics from Jerry Moen, and by 2017, he was asked to be in the knife, the a member of the knife, make, knife makers guild. He had kind of a hard time getting in with paperwork and some stuff, but after three inspections, he's now a voting member of the guild, which is pretty cool. And yes, I'm slightly intimidated doing a video on Jim's knife because. He does such amazing videos himself, and his photography is out there, 
And the thumbnail is a picture that he took before he shipped it to me. He sent me a bunch of pictures uh, before shipping this knife to me. So I'm using one of those for the thumbnail. And throughout the video, I may splatter in some other pictures that he took. So ah, where do we even begin? I have two pages of notes that Jim sent me and we were talking about and things like that. So I won't go through everything. I'm going to miss some stuff for sure. But that's what you get. It's This is, you know... I'm just an average guy talking about an awesome knife here. So he uses a lot of different steels. This one is CPM 154. He does use S35. He uses 3V. He uses some Damascus steel and some different Damascus from Chad Nichols uh, and some blued dragon skin Damascus. And he's starting to use some Magna Cut. But again, this one is CPM 154. Now how this one came about, I didn't order this. This was built for a different customer. And that customer kind of fell through. It didn't come to fruition. So he had texted me and said, hey, now that I'm making the mini Hellraiser, can we get you into one at some point? You know, And I kind of messaged back and said, sure. I, at some point, I'm going to want one, partially because I have his other two. And I really did want something that Jim made. I always kind of wanted one. And him and I and Alex, my co-host on EDC Hour, um, have all talked together, the three of us, about doing kind of a, not a collaboration, but, you know, Jim building two knives, one for me and one for Alex that were the same. That didn't happen here. But so we went back and forth. I said, sure, at some point I will, blah, blah, blah. And then he sent me a little video clip of this. And it started in a dark room with the glow. And he goes... Well, I'm only asking because I happen to have this available. And he kind of walks out of the darkened bedroom into a room with light. And then he goes on to explain what it is, shows how it fits in his hand, blah, blah, blah. So that's how I ended up. I messaged him back. I said, dude, you got me with the kryptonite. My kryptonite is the glow. So I had to have it. Okay. So he despises Kydex sheaths. So he got together with Randall Mackey, met him in Texas, who makes these fine leather sheaths. I actually like Kydex. Most of my sheaths, holsters, things of those natures are Kydex. So this is really not my first leather sheath. I have some others. Uh, and I had uh, Lancelot Leather make this one for me. And uh, for the Frank Fisher fixed battle. And this works fine. This is not something I'm going to carry. I had a little input in this because Lancelot asked me what I wanted in a sheath. And I said, I don't really know. <laughs> so that's what we came up with. Um, and it is certainly better than cardboard, which is what that fixed battle used to be in. So with this one, he already had a sheath. I had no input. So this carries horizontally. And I have kind of, I, I've carried it around the house. All right. That's about the extent of it. I've not carried it out in public yet. Um, and I've talked to Jim about where he carries his and tried to get some ideas from some other folks. Um, and where I have carried it around the house is left kind of at like 11 o'clock right in very front of my belt line as close to the center as I can on the left side, wherever the belt loops kind of land. Right. So it is easy to grab with my right hand and you can actually deploy it with my left hand. So that position seems to work under a t-shirt and stuff. It seems to conceal fairly well doesn't print and things like that. So I think that's a good spot. I have just have not gotten to the point where I'm carrying it outside yet and out in public. So Randall Mackey can do um, just in leather and then exotic stuff. Um, you name it, he can do it. So it's pretty awesome. So Jim actually does all of his sheaths from, from Mackey 
And he offers a discount if you as a purchaser decide you do not want a sheath at all and you want to make your own thing or do it yourself. All right, that makes sense. So when Jim started out, he was making much smaller knives. And because of his name, Skelton, it's always mispronounced and misspelled into skeleton. So his original knives started out being named after bones. The occipital, the tibia, the scapula, the scaphoid, and some others. Then he started running out of cool names of bones. So he went back to his love of horror and sci-fi movies, and the Hellraiser was born. The bigger one, version two, and now version three of the full size, and a mini scaled down version. This, I think, is probably, and he agrees, is probably one of the best sizes of his EDC. You know, this is really made for EDC, everyday carry, somebody that's going to carry a fixed blade in addition to their folder, folding knife. Okay? So, and he started the Hellraiser one back in 2018 was the first full-size one that he prototyped and whatnot. And he, he wanted to challenge himself with the compound grinds and the recurve. Now, Jim and I share a love for recurve. He also loves the harpoon. I'm kind of... Eh, I'm ambiguous on the harpoon. I, I could take it or leave it. I do like it, I guess, in, for the most part. Aesthetically, I kind of think it'd be nicer without the harpoon. Not this specific knife, but just in general. But we share that. Now, Jim was the very first person that I learned about the Frank Fisher battle, which has a double recurve and a harpoon. The earlier models didn't have a harpoon. Once I saw Jim's video on the battle, I had to have one. I just, I knew that was something I wanted. I didn't know I was going to end up with one this fancy. But I did, just in recent years. So Jim and I share a lot of similarities in what we collect. We enjoy the Hellraiser series from Ed Kim at Red Horse Knifeworks. We enjoy the battle. We enjoy the Archangel which I have in the other room from Todd Fisher, Frank's dad. And, you know, we have a, we like those kind of bigger overbuilt knives, the big knives, things like that. So Jim and I have become kind of fast friends, if you will, which has been great. Now, one of the things that he changed on this one, he shrunk everything down from the original Hellraiser, but the finger choil, he couldn't really shrink down because that's a usable part. Like, you're going to shrink it down for like midget fingers. So he couldn't shrink that down, but what he did do, and I want to zoom in on this and talk about it because I've, I've looked at every single knife I own. And this is the very first time I have ever seen it. Now I'm not going to say that it's never been done before, but if this will focus The finger choil is contoured. It's rounded. It's super comfortable. I mean, it. I've never seen it before. I saw it on this and I was like, duh, why doesn't everybody do that? And I love the fact that it's just a sterile blade. So it is a recurve. Has a nice swedge. So this really challenged him, the Hellraiser line, to do things that weren't just straight, flat, normal grinds and bevels. This is what he calls the Devil's Moon. And he started out doing the Devil's Tail. And he added this as a challenge to himself because that's one of the last things he does on the scales after he spent time contouring and rounding the scales the last one of the last things he has to do is really polish and taper these down. And so it was a challenge that he doesn't break it and throw away a day or two's worth of work on a set of handles. 
The other thing that he does that he got a little bit of heat from is he uses titanium pivots to attach the handle scales to the blade. A lot of people, and when he first started, he was using epoxy and pins like most everybody for 20 cents. But he thought, really? Why am I cheaping out on the scales when I'm charging a premium for the knife? So he uses titanium pivots at like 25 bucks to put together the scales. But what that gives him the ability to do is make additional scales for people. So I could order up, ask him to make the carbon fiber scale because I'm super into carbon fiber. And I could gen- then just replace them and change them at will if I so cho- chose. So that gives him kind of a cool options there. And I'm going to put up above here some other pictures of the progression of that devil's moon from the devil's tail. He sent me a few pictures. So I'll insert them up here at the top as I check my notes to see what else I've got from him. So I talked to him about how long it takes. And really for this Hellraiser series, it's anywhere from 8 to 40 hours per knife. Depends on the of the blade steel, really. Well, the blade steel, the whole steel. Um, something like this, he doesn't have to get too crazy with the hand finishing. He sands it down to 220, 400 grit, and then just bead blasts it, and he's good to go. Damascus steel or dragon skin Damascus, he may do 40 hours just in hand finishing to get that mirror polish and to get the pop of the pattern. Something like this is going to take a lot more time than something like this. Okay. This is not one that Jim made, of course, but just, you know, or, or something like this is going to take some more hand work on the blade than just a quick bead blast. I think I've covered most all of his stuff. What I haven't talked about is the specs on the actual knife. So let me run through those just really quickly. And I know I warned you at the beginning, this is probably going to be a longer video because I wanted to do Jim justice. It's just a hair over eight inches overall. The blade where I measure the blade is from the very ed- the farthest point of the scale to the tip. And that's 3.6. The edge 3.34. Now, behind the edge, it kind of varies. It's a little bit thinner here at the front, and it kind of gets a little fatter at the back. It's 0.021 up to 0.027. The blade thickness is 0.145, and it weighs in at 4.8 ounces, knife alone, 6.8 ounces as a package in this particular sheath. You could do your own sheath. You can talk to Mackie about doing some exotic materials, things like that. So your mileage will vary on those ones. The scale, it is also, it swells in the middle. It's contoured and rounded in every direction. So it feels fantastic. At its thickest, it's 0.631. Kind of glancing at my notes to see if there's anything I forgot. And I don't think so. It came really sharp. I mean, I'm sure there's some things I'm forgetting about Jim, but if you haven't seen Jim's videos, please go check him out. I will put a link to his channel down below. And I will put a link up here for the EDC Hour with Dirk and Alex, my other channel where I do live streams. And Jim was our first guest. So I would implore you to please go check that video out next so that you can get a more in-depth out of the horse's mouth, if you will, from Jim about him, because I thought that was a great episode that we picked just prime time to do that episode right in the middle of the Super Bowl. I don't know what I was thinking. But I'll give you a couple of quick size comparisons just because I have it here. The Sharpie, the fixed battle from Frank Fisher, just a hair bigger than that. Since we've got the Frank Fisher battle here also. 
And a couple of knives that you'll probably understand here is the Spyderco Delica, which this particular one actually glows also. Let's see if I blast it with the UV a little bit. See, for me, it's all about the glow. It really is. And then next to the original custom Hellraiser. So there you go, guys. I, I know this ran long. I, I appreciate that. But thank you if you stuck through to the end. Now, please go check out the live stream that we did with Jim as a guest. And thank you very much.